evening and welcome to day four here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Now what a treat you are in for this evening's action. Just to name a few, we have Hannah Miley going out in the women's 200 metres individual medley, but closely behind her is sure to be Siobhan Marie O'Connor and Sophie Allen as well. Now Chris Walker-Hebben has had an incredible week of swimming this week, but Liam Tancock is tipped to take the top spot in the men's 50 metre backstroke. And our golden girl of the week is Francesca Halsall. She'll be going out in the women's 50 metres butterfly as well. Now you can keep up to all the action here on the live stream. Alternatively on Sky Sports 2, the action will be kicking off tonight from 6 o'clock. But now from me, it's over to Bob Ballard to hear what he's got to say from the heat session this morning. Three down, three to go in the British Gas Swimming Championships in Glasgow. The first event of the morning, the women's 200 metres backstroke. And after a year, she would want to forget. Lizzie Simmons is determined to make 2014 a year to remember. The swimmer now based in Bath clocked the fastest time of the morning, 2.12.06. With still more to come, we hope. The Flying Scotsman back after setting a new record in the 100 breaststroke last night. Ross Murdoch was keen to blow away the morning cobwebs in the 50. That he did in the final heat with a rapid 27.62. Adam Peaty just four one hundredths of a second slower and they'll be ploughing their own furrow in tonight's semi-finals. The men's 100 freestyle improving in terms of depth in Britain, but one thing doesn't change in the women's. That's Fran Housel remaining the one to beat. The British record holder had fire in her belly this week, and even though she's cruised through the heat, she chose not to on this occasion. 54-6-7, a decent time with better to come, surely in the semis, and then the final tomorrow. Hannah Miley opted out of the 400 IM earlier in the week but has the 200 in her schedule and whilst it may be a secondary consideration in her medley repertoire, she was still the fastest in the heats. 2.12.62, just over half a second outside her entry time but three seconds shy of her British record. If you ever wonder why Rula Militite was the Olympic champion at 100 breaststroke, you only have to look at her start, her turn and everything else about her swim in the heats this morning. 65.63, the fastest time in the world this year. She'll be hypercritical, though. That was not her best finish. Jazz Carlin has already been pre-selected for Wales in the 800 metres freestyle. And whilst not being in the best race shape, she can still produce a world-class time. Unchallenged for the most part, Carlin was able to put together an 8.29 high and will surely trim that down still further when it comes to Monday's final. Welcome to the Tolkos International Swimming Centre in Glasgow for day four of the British Swimming Championships of 2014. We have lots and lots of exciting finals tonight. Lots of big names that you will remember, will be very well acquainted with, and hope to see more of, I'm sure, here in the pool in Glasgow. First off tonight, exclusively to our stream, not available anywhere else, we will have the junior women's 200 meters backstroke final, followed by the junior men's 100 meters freestyle final. And third off, it will be the junior women's 200 meters individual medley final. And then we will join our colleagues from Sky Sports to bring you all the senior finals and semi-finals during the course of the evening. Joe Jackson, once again, is alongside me in the absence of the marathoning Ross Davenport. And his time today, Joe, was? Yeah, Ross did the marathon today, his time was three hours 53 so you know a really respectable time he only did a marathon a week ago so incredible i don't think i've known any swimmer do two marathons in a week so i could never ever do that so hands up to ross massive congratulations and we're looking forward to seeing him tomorrow back with you yes he'll be back here in the commentary box with me in the morning i think he might be battered he might be bruised whether we can get him up the stairs or not without a rope and tackle might be a different question you're definitely losing the better look one and getting uh, ross back oh i Definitely wouldn't say that, Joe. Absolutely not. No, I don't, I don't even need to question that uh, statement at all. All right, let's have a look at uh, the lineup. You won't be able to see it on your screen, but I'll give it to you one, two, eight. It's the junior 200 metres backstroke final. Emily Cutler will go for Kelly College. 
in lane one. Courtney Price of Royal Wolverhampton in two. Rosie Rudin of Nova Centurion in three. Brittany Halton of City of Birmingham in four. Isabel Thwaite of Wirral Metro in five. Catherine Greenslade of Preston in lane six. In seven, Chloe Golding of Ellesmere and Holly Hibbert of Southport in lane number eight. That's uh, remember, we're looking for the next generation of 200 backstrokers. Fastest qualifier this morning was Brittany Horton. Only 2.17.20. I say only that time because she has been considerably quicker than that. 2.14.45 is her best time. A couple of PBs this morning in the heat. Courtney Price with her best time of 2.18.64. Catherine Greenslade, 2.18.14. Turn of backstroke final for the juniors underway. And uh, pretty much all together in the line. A pretty good start by Chloe Golding in lane number seven at 25. She's there or thereabouts alongside Rosie Rudin of Nova Centurion. Yeah, Rosie Rudin had a great first 15 metres there. She was up on the start. Great underwater fly leg kick, and she's looking really strong. Three of the girls set personal best this morning in the heat, so they will want to try and get near that time again. But Brittany Horton in lane four has got the fastest PB out of the whole of this pool. So, you know, look for lane four. She could be the one that's challenging for that first place. Yeah, she is about a second quicker than anybody else in the field in terms of uh, personal best. But personal best has been broken left, right and centre during the course of the first three days and into day number four here in Glasgow, so we expect some more to go. The green cap of Rosie Rudin is very prominent in this from Nova Centurion. And as she comes towards the end of the first hundred, she's going to be leading. She's going to have a body length, maybe two body lengths advantage as she comes into the wall. Impressive first hundred. Can she keep this going? Going. Great first hundred for Rosie there. She's looking strong. She's looking really smooth. Her underwater is really strong compared to some of the others in the race. And if she can keep this going, this is going to be a great swim. She's just turned in a 105.0. So that's a great first hundred for her. She just needs to keep that going through the race and not die off towards the end. Well, nobody really is threatening her yet, though it looks like the threat, if it does come, is going to come from Brittany Horton in lane number four and Isabel Thwaite in number five. But as you can see, as she's getting towards the end of the 50 here. That is a very impressive 150 split for her in 139.98. She has a lead of over a second and a half. And Rosie has a best of 215.1. So it looks like she's going to smash that PB. She just needs to keep it going. She does look like she's starting to tie up slightly. But if she can keep that pace going, this is going to be a great personal best for her this evening. Well, I don't think she's going to be threatened for the victory. Although on the far side, Holly Hibbert is coming back massively quickly. But I think she's probably left herself a little bit too much to do to win this. Just about enough room for manoeuvre, enough margin for error for Rosie Rudin, who finishes in 214.96. That's a big new personal best, well over a second for her. Second place going to Holly Hibbert in lane number eight. And Brittany Horton in third for Birmingham in 216.42. Well, we didn't get the winner we're expecting, but I'm sure that Rosie Rudin is absolutely thrilled with that time. Great swim there, and also Holly Hibbert out in lane eight, outside swimmer. That's also a second personal best for her. So them two, top two swimmers both got personal best. So that's a great race for them and a great stepping stone. So Rosie Rudin in first, Holly Hibbert second, Brittany Horton in third. Isabel Thwait 216.99 was her time in fourth place. We so we can't bring you the graphics on this. When we go to our live Sky Show, we'll have everything back in place. But just we'll run through the top four for you there. As we move on to the junior 100 meters freestyle. Now, it's an event we want to see move forward. It is starting inexorably to get that way from a men's point of view. And we're looking at the next generation of juniors in what has always been the Blue Ribbon event. We've never had a pure class world sprinter in Great Britain. The 100's always been a little bit poor for us. But looking at some of these boys, they have best of 50.9, 50.7, and they're still quite young, but we need to see them breaking that 50 point. We'll see later on in the evening at the senior guys going hopefully 48 point that's what we're hoping they're going to go but you know they'll be hitting 49 as well but it'd be great to see one of these try and sneak under that 50 point it's going to be really tough for them but that's what we need to start seeing in the world this summer's going 47 48 point and we haven't quite got that yet but that's what we need to see let's give you the one to eight bradley lynch of city of birmingham in lane number one john slater of basingstoke in two sean muscroft of the city of manchester 
Master Aquatics in three, Duncan Scott of the first club in four, Jack Smith, Plymouth Leander in five, Miles Munro of Beau Sejour in six, Jordan Hughes of North Ayrshire going in lane number seven, and Martin Walton for Hatfield in lane number eight. Well, how close can we get to the 50 mark? None of these swimmers so far has broken the 50. We have people in the 50.7 range, 50.97 range. Jack Smith has been 50.7, so maybe this is the time for him to move into the 40s. Yeah, a second would be a big drop for him to make, but if he can get in the low 50s, that would be brilliant. Five of the guys set PBs this morning, so, you know, they've had great heat swims. They just need to progress that to the final. City of Birmingham, Basingstoke, City of Manchester Aquatics first, Plymouth, Leander, Beausajour, North Ayrshire and Hatfield are represented here. Could be good or scrap because uh, there's not a big variance between their personal best. They're all around about the 51.5, some in the upper 50s. If they all finish on roughly their personal best, there'll be about a second between them when they finish and it may not be much more than that here. Junior 100 meters freestyle final, certainly in terms of entry time from how things were this morning. Duncan Scott is the man to look for 50.97. And they have, as we expected, all gone out with a pretty even break. But for the outside smokers here, both lanes one, Bradley Lynch and Martin Walton in lane eight have a pretty good start. Let's see where they are at the turn. It's just going to be Jack Smith, 24-5. Miles Monroe by three one hundreds. He's behind. And third is Martin Walton in lane eight. It was really close at that turn. You can see they're all neck and neck in the middle lanes are starting to come through here. You can see Jack Smith from Plymouth Leander trying to keep up with Duncan Scott and Miles Monroe. And it is, does look like it's going to be down to the touch. They're trying to get that touch first. Lanes four, lane five. Call your winner. I think it's going to be four. Duncan Scott, 50.67. That's a big new chunk he's taken out of that. Jack Smith, 50.90 in second. Miles Monroe, 51.17. And fourth to Sean Muscroft in 51.60. So a new... Uh, Impressive swim from Duncan Scott, who lowers her mark to 50.67 and 16 year old. I think it may be a Scottish age group record, too. Yeah, and it's also a PB for Miles Munro there. So, you know, it's a great swim for both of those boys getting PBs. 50.6 is a very strong swim for these guys. And if he can keep taking 0.1, 0.2 off his personal best, he will be down in the 49s in no time. And then he will be reaching the senior finals because they were going 50 points to make that final. So they're not far away from that. Good work all. It was very, very tight. In fact, one, two, eight separated by a negligible amount, just about a second, 1.1 uh, in the end between uh, first and last. One more junior final before we get into the senior stuff. And it is the 200 meters individual medley final. We had a PB from the uh, fastest qualifier here, Constance Dean of Maidenhead, did a 219.78 this morning. I don't think she'd ever been down below 220 before this morning, but she did to make the qualifying standard. And made the final in lane number four. Here they come out on to Paul Deck. We'll give them to you as they are introduced. In eight, here comes Holly Hibbert. In lane number one, it'll be Zara Ryan of Newbury Swimming Club. There she is. 17, Bruce of Carnegie. Portsmouth North Sea, represented by Emma Trotman. From Leicester, it is Megan Morrison, who will go to lane number six. from Rosie Rudin. She's hardly had a chance to go out the back, have a cup of coffee and then just relax before she's back on the blocks again. Hopefully she'll be nice and warmed up for this 200 medley. Abby Wood, the bench show in five. And then the uh, best performance of the day. The only one to get the personal best in the morning swim, Constance Dean of Maidenhead goes in lane number four. So, we we'll look at the uh, 219 brigade. Rosie Rudin has been down to 218. Didn't show that this morning. She's about four seconds outside her personal best with a 218.20. 
But Constantine has uh, closed the gap on her quite appreciably since this morning. Well, green caps here, so if I do call green cap, I might be calling either the Nova Centurion swimmer Rosie Rudin or possibly Constantine from Maidenhead. Away they go. A little bit uh, slow for the box is Megan Morrison there of all of them. And Emma Trotman was uh, also not too quickly away. But the far side lanes, four up to eight, are all pretty much in a line at 25. Abby Wood had a great start there. You saw her use that underwater work and come up first. But in lane number six, we've got Megan Morrison from City of Leicester that's got a great fly stroke. And she's looking really strong down this first 50. At the 50 split, it will be Megan Morrison and is at 29.36. Constance Dean is in second place. Abby Wood is in third. So that was a butterfly. This is the backstroke. Yeah. Medleys can change every single 50. That's the exciting thing about medley races. You can be a fly swimmer, back breaststroke, or freestyle, and they can change every single turn. So they make it exciting to watch. But to me, breaststroke is one of the main components of that medley swim. They need to have a strong breaststroke. And you can see Constance Dean's come through on that back backstroke she's got a great backstroke and she's looking great coming into this second turn well a big step down in terms of time this morning and she may well be on course for the same this evening 105 18 at the 100 split rosie rudin in second place to say she's just had a very hard swim she's back for more and in third place is zara ryan who is closest to us in lane number one yeah, hopefully rosie's recovered from that uh, 200 backstroke early she might be feeling a little bit tired but she's looking good on the breaststroke at the minute she's got a little bit of catching up to do if she wants to get in contention for that p first position because Constance Dean is still there out in the first place and she is looking great on this breaststroke leg. At the moment, it's not like anybody's going to overtake her. Has anybody got a better front crawl than she? Well, they're going to have to make up an awful lot of ground. Abby Wood is coming closer and closer. She's only now just over three tenths of a second behind her. Megan Morrison is in third place and now here comes the splash and dash to the end. Yeah, Abby Wood's definitely come through there. You can see her freestyle is her stronger stroke, but Constance isn't giving up. You can see that they're both fighting for that first place, and it does look like it's going to be a great time for this, but Abby Wood is taking the lead. The DaVincio swimmer has snuck in front and is not going to relinquish this lead, though Constantine is digging and trying to get closer and closer. She's not going to get close enough for victory anyway. 2.18.10 for Abby Wood. That is a personal best by over a second. Constance Dean has improved on her personal best as well. 2.18.85 and third, Megan Morrison with fourth place going to Tane Bruce. Yeah, top three all got personal bests there, so they've all had great swims there, great personal bests, and that's definitely the step in the right direction for these girls. For all the, the others who want to know how their swimmers finished, Emma Trotman was in fifth place, 224.42, Rosie Rudin, 224.75, uh, Zara Ryan, 225.37, Holly Hibbert in the end, 225.65, but a really, really good time for Abby Wood, 218.10, and Constantine in second. Coming shortly, we will bring you the 200 meters backstroke final for women, the 100 freestyle final for men, and then we'll have the semi-finals of the women's 100 meters freestyle and the 50 breaststroke semi-finals coming up. All of those live here on swimming.org, and you can also catch them on television in high definition on Sky Sports 2. Two hundred meters backstroke to come. Rachel Lefley is going to go in lane number one. Stephanie Reynolds from Kelly College in two. Jessica Fuller Love in three for City of Manchester. Four will be Lizzie Simmons having a bit of a comeback year after an atrocious year in 2013. Lauren Quigley of Stockport Metro in five. Chloe Hannon of City of Peterborough will go in six. Megan Briggs in seven for Warren de Bards. And eight is Candice Hall. And here they are. I was going to say numer numerical order but they're coming 8-1 so there's Candice Hall from the city of Leicester new personal best for her this morning of 216.44 
six in the Manchester Aquatics, represented by Rachel Lefley. She has been as quick as two, 11.30. Megan Briggs of Warren de Bars, representing Scotland as well. This time with 2.13.35, about two seconds outside that in the heats this morning. Stephanie Reynolds of Kelly College will go to lane two. Chloe Hannon, very, very quick out of the blocks and straight up those stairs to get to lane number six. Jessica Fullerlove, another City of Manchester aquatic swimmer, goes straight to lane number three. Just up the road in Stockport resides Lauren Quigley. Had a busy week as Lauren, doing several events, and here she is in the final turn of backstroke. And here is Lizzie Simmons, former training partner of Joe Jackson at Loughborough University. I think before we start, we should, well, certainly when we get the race underway, we should talk about what a horrendous year she had last year. Absolutely dreadful year. There's the one to eight confirmed for you. Lizzie Simmons is the best of the bunch, or should be anyway, in lane number four. There she is. Can't wait to get underway. She had a very good start to 2014. Hoping to back it up. But a really, really tough time for nominating for the English Commonwealth Games team. 207.96. Now, the best she's ever done is 206.79. I don't think she's quite in that form right now. So we hope that uh, Lizzie can get it all together here. Just a quick word about the year she had in 2013, Joe. Uh, you know her very well. You used to train with her. Yeah. I mean, she, she's really had to pick herself up on the floor. Yeah, Lizzie Simmons really had a disappointing year last year. She's been on the senior team, you know, since I can remember, since I was on the team. And unfortunately, she missed it last year, and she was devastated with how she swam. So I really hope that she can do a good performance there. The nomination time for Team England is a really tough qualification for them. You know, it's top three in the Commonwealth Games, and there's three or Australians that are very strong swimmers, but she does have a personal best of 206, so it'd be great if we could see her get somewhere close to that tonight. 29.93 at the 50 meter mark. Lauren Quigley is going with her. She's in second place, and Jessica Fuller Love in third. It's a very, very tough qualification, but this is a very positive swing by Lizzie Simmons, even in the down times where it's not been working so well for her. She's always tried to be positive, and hopefully she can pull Laura Quigley along to a very fast time as well. Yeah, Lizzie's had a great start here she's going to be turning first at the first hundred and turning in a 102.4 so that's a great first 100 but we've already seen Lauren Quigley this week in the 100 backstroke have a great swim but you can see Lizzie Simmons has got the best turns in this field she kind of wipes the floor on the rest of them so she needs to keep this up if she wants to go at 207. Well as we look nearest the camera Jessica Fuller Love is in lane three far side is Lauren Quigley in five and uh, in the pink outfit or partially pink outfit anyway it's Lizzie Simmons in lane number four she moved down from Loughborough to Bath these days. And working very hard with her down there, trying to put her career back together again. It's looking pretty decent now. The time at the turn, 135.85 for Lizzie Simmons. Lauren Quigley in second. And third place, Jessica Fuller Love. About a second between first and second at the turn. That's a great time of 135. If Elizabeth Simmons can keep this up, then it is possible she could go 2-7. But you can see Lauren Quigley coming back really strong. She's on Elizabeth Simmons' shoulder. And it is going to be neck and neck down this line. Last 20 meters. What a scrap between these two and Lauren Quigley, I think, has taken over at the front of the race. 2.10.15 is the best time that she's ever done. She's on course to beat that here. 2.09.79, a new personal best for Lauren Quigley. 2.10.72 in second place for Lizzie Simmons and Jessica Fuller of a 2.12.66. So they haven't made the English nomination time, but that was a really good finish. Doesn't seem to be blowing all that much. It does a bit now, actually. Lauren Quigley, but uh, that was a terrifically well-paced race, and she came in the right time at the right place. That was really good for Lauren. I think Elizabeth's going to be really disappointed with that. She just faded down this last 10 metres, but, you know, she led that whole way. Look at her underwater work. She's one of the world's best starters. You can see how she starts off, but you can see her fading down this last five metres where Lauren gets that touch. Yeah, she probably led that for, well, 175, maybe 180 metres, but then Lauren Quigley took over. 209.79, the winning time for the Stockport Metro swimmer. Elizabeth Simmons, Lizzie Simmons in second place, and Jessica Fuller Love in a 2.12.66. Let's hear what Lauren Quigley thought about her win in 209.79. Lauren, a magnificent performance today. You've really stormed it home, love, at 550 metres. Tell us what you were thinking, 
was the last stage of that race. Um, I was thinking about the fact that I've got to go back there now and do 100 freestyle. Um, no, no, I was just thinking, you know, get my rate up, you know, just give it all I've got because it's a tuna back, you know, you've got to give it all, so. And you've been looking really sharp all of this season. Did you come into today feeling confident? Um, yeah, I think everyone has to come in feeling confident. Um, you know, you, you, you just got to know that you've done the work and, you know, hopefully it pays off from that block, so. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your new 200 metre backstroke champion. Thank you. She has had a very, very busy week, and she's not finished yet. She's got other events to come on the remaining two days, so there's another swimmer who knows what it's like to really put themselves through the ringer, Joe. Lauren's still got the 100 free, and I think it's about 10 minutes' time, so she needs to get off and recover for that 100 freestyle semi-final. But a great swim for her. She'll be really pleased with how... And we can, oh, we can see Fran waving in the car room and Amy Smith. Uh, you see, that's a good thing with the swimmers. We all get a long load. It's great to see them uh, having fun in the car room. A little bit inside into what it's like to be in a swimming call room ahead of a big event. This is a very big event for all the English swimmers in particular as they look to try and get into that England Commonwealth Games team. Some of the Scots still have times as well, and some of the Wales team are not free selected. Jack Scott came on first in lane eight, followed by Craig Gibbons of Wickham District in the men's 100 metres freestyle. Now, you might recognise this young man in lane number seven. I do him. Looking a bit nervous. <laughs> That's Joe's husband-to-be in lane number seven. Everyone keep your fingers crossed for him. Seven's Adam, uh, two's Adam Barrett of Loughborough, three Adam Brown of Hatfield. There is the big man, based in America these days. It's Hulk Hogan, is it? He's absolutely huge. Here's the... Brand new, bright young thing from Plymouth Leander. A year ago, we knew very little about Ben Proud. Now we know a lot about him, he's doing great times. But the fastest qualifier, surprisingly, I think, for the final, is the new Wales record holder, Callum Jarvis, who did that in 49.54 yesterday. He's having a great week this week. He's down with David McNulty down in Bath, and he did an amazing 200 freestyle. So he's going to be one to watch. He's going to have a great back end here. You're going to see Adam and Benjamin Proud go out strong, but Callum will bring it back. That's your one to eight, and I think this is going to be a difficult one to call, to be absolutely honest. As, uh, in years gone by, we've pretty much been able to tell you who's going to win 100 freestyle if we can't tell you what the time's going to be. But here, it could be Adam Barrett, it could be Adam Brown, it could be Callum Jarvis, it could be Ben Proud, it could be James Disney May, it could even be Grant Turner. Any one of those six could win this race. Exciting for British swimming. Exciting for the four by one relay for the Commonwealth Games. Hundred freestyle final. Whilst the start is not as important in the 100 as it is at the 50, Ben Proud, like most Plymouth swimmers, got away about uh, a tenth of a second quicker than everybody else there. Ben Proud's got a great start. He's got a great 50. He's the British record holder of the 50 freestyle, so we can expect him to go out strong. But Callum Jarvis is a 200 freestyler, so he will bring it back really hard, but you can see them going out really strong. At the first 50, it is James Disney made just in the lead from Ben Proud in second, Adam Brown in third, Callum Jarvis in fourth. There is nothing to choose between those four at this stage. And James Disney made is looking incredible. He had a great first 50 there, turning in a 23, and he's looking really strong at the moment. But you've got Adam Brown coming back in lane three. It's very close at the minute. James Disney made trying to hold on. He's not going to be able to hold on because Adam Brown is coming back. Adam Brown's going to take this in a time of 49.35. Ben Proud. 49.54 and third place going to James Disney May who led that race for quite a long time. Callum Jarvis couldn't back up his Welsh record with a 49.83 but the winning time for Adam Brown is 49.35 and that is a brand new personal best for him by 13 one hundredths of a second. That's a great swim for those four boys. All four going 49 point. That's really good, looking good for their relays. You can see the finish there. He gets his head down and he puts his hand on the wall. That's a great swim for Adam. I think he'll be really pleased with how he's done. Great finish too by Adam Brown. Really wasn't in the mix so much with 25 to go but uh, just showing the power and the tenacity of Adam Brown these days is a changed swimmer. I think it's improved so much over the last two years. Winning time of 49.35. Proud in second. Disney May in third. Adam 
a stunning performance there. A blanket finish at the end, but you got the touch. How are you feeling about that performance? Yeah, it was a good race. Uh, I knew it was going to be tough coming in. There's some fast guys in this field, and uh, the 100 free keeps getting better and better. So it's always good to get in and race these guys. And to get the win is always good, so I'm pleased. And you train out in the States in Auburn with a fantastic sprint, quad, sprint squad. How do you find it coming back and racing the best of British? It's always good to come back and uh, race these guys. Everyone here is really improving. And uh, as long as we keep moving forward into Rio, we're going to have a good uh, four by one freestyle relay team. So it's always good to come home and race these guys. Brilliant. Thanks, Adam. Glasgow, give it up for your new 100 meter freestyle British champion. Well, when I talked to him last night, I said, you've only been back in the country because he flew in, I think, on Tuesday. Uh, and I said, you really need a day for every hour that you're behind in America. And he said, well, by Sunday night, then, it'll be the five hours I need. I should be back on schedule. And I think he was back on schedule, wasn't he? Yeah, he left it late coming home, but that obviously worked. And that was a great swim for him. You know, he's out in America training, and he seems to be coming every year, coming back and swimming really strong. He now needs to to produce that on the major stage at the Olympics, World Championships and Commonwealth later on in the year. Eight women have suddenly appeared. There will be 16 in total because we're going to get the semi-finals of the women's 100 metres freestyle. There's Rebecca Turner and she is the fastest qualifier for this semi-final anyway with a 54 7 ones a personal best. She did a 55.6 this morning. There is the 1 to 8 in the first semi final of the women's 100 meters freestyle. Becky Turner in four. Amelia Moore now swimming for Aquasulis in three. And Grace Vertigans is in lane five. They are the three fastest from this morning's heat, but there are plenty of other swimmers in and around them who are looking for big new personal bests. Now, Becky Turner's not had the greatest start to 2014. She has her university work to think about as well, but she's very determined this morning. She's looking very determined. Most Grace Vertigan in lane number five. Plymouth Leander having a great meet so far. You know, their sprint program is fantastic down there. But we've also got Lauren Quigley, who's just come out of the 200 backstroke as well in lane two, so she might be feeling a little bit tired, but it's great to see her do back-to-back -back races. So, Grace Mertigans, what can you do? Can you get anywhere near your personal best of 55.42? She hasn't done that time this season yet. Rebecca Turner is starting to react in lane number four. She's coming right alongside her. And Rebecca Turner, with a lot of smooth control, a lot of speed as well, is going to take this. And she just snuck through very, very well indeed to take that time of 55.24, fastest as she has been this year closing in on her personal best and that's more like it from Becky Turner more of what her coach Ross Barber wants to see from her today. Becky Turner is so strong down that back half you know you can see her pulling through here putting her head down and finishing really strong. I used to race against Becky and she used to scare me down that last 50 because she comes back so strong she's like a train and she just gets the head down and touches the wall and that's a really good swim for her and that will get her through to the final for tomorrow evening. Grace Vertigans will also be in there. There's the clarification of the result for you. Grace Vertigans in second, Amelia Moore in third, and Harry Cooper might just have to wait a little while, see whether she can progress to the final tomorrow night. On to ball deck come the semi-finalists for the second 100 freestyle semi. And there are representatives from Plymouth, two from Manchester, three from Loughborough, one from the University of Stirling and Guildford all in here. And you will recognize that lady, I'm sure, by now, Francesca Halsall of Loughborough University. Another one doing many events. She's doing the 50 and 100 fly, the 50 and 100 free. And she is in lane four alongside teammate Amy Smith and uh, one of the great Scottish prospects, John Harkin, in lane number six. What are you thinking, Joe? Well, I spoke to Fran earlier, and she's actually a little bit disappointed with how she's done this week, so she really wants to have a strong swim here. She wants to go in there and produce a world-class 100 freestyle, so she needs to have a good start, which she's been working on in training. We saw that this morning. Her start was really, really good, so, you know, we can see her underwater there. She's come up strong, and that is a good start for her in lane number four. Fran is the British record holder at 52.87. Sean Harkin, I mentioned earlier on, is uh, certainly got her eyes on Caitlin McClatch's Scottish record of 
54.31, but uh, I like the way the Fran Hausel swam the heats of this this morning, and she's swinging in a very similar way in the semi-finals. She will be leading at 50, absolutely certain of that. 26.03, Amy Smith, her training partner at 26.43 in second, and Rebecca Guy is in third at the moment. Fran looking to bring it back speedily here. That's a good first 50 for Fran. She'll be happy with a 26-0. You know, Amy needs to hang on there. You can see her starting to fade, and Fran is, you know, coming back like a train. She's looking really strong, and she's going to produce a good time here to get her through to the final. Can she get a low 54? Can she get a high 53? It's a 54-29. That's solid. Very, very solid from Fran Halsall. She'll be happy with that. That's a good progression from this morning uh, to take into the final tomorrow night. Jess Lloyd getting second place in 55-24, and Amy Smith in third. Fran's definitely happy with that. You can see a little cheeky smile at the end. You know, you can see her here finishing this last five metres, you know, getting her head down, touching that wall. And, you know, she will be happy with that. That's a strong semi-final for her, faster than this morning. And now she can rest and prepare for tomorrow evening. Yeah, she will be absolutely thrilled with that because it was a good step up from the heats this morning. And uh, the eight to go through, Cooper, Morn, Vertigans, Guy, Smith, Lloyd, and, of course, uh, Francesca Halsall, fastest qualifier, 54.29. Next up, it will be the men's 50 metres of breaststroke. We saw an absolute thriller yesterday in the 100 metres breaststroke. We saw Adam Peaty and we saw Ross Murdoch go head to head, setting records left, right, and centre. Scottish record, nearly a British record. Adam Peaty going sub one minute for the first time. And there is Adam Peaty in lane number four in this first semi final, flanked either side by Mark Campbell. And and Andrew Weatherit. Let's talk about the progression of Adam Peaty, shall we, Joe? Oh, last one. That's another swimmer that we really didn't know too much about early stages of 2013. Here we are in 2014, and we're getting excited about this young man, aren't we? I'm really excited about Adam. He trains in the city of Derby with Mel Marshall, who used to be a swimmer herself, and you speak to Mel, and she's got high hopes for Adam. He's such a hard trainer, and he's a big boy as well. You can see him. He's huge compared to some of those other swimmers. You can see him there getting ready for this 50 semi-final, and you know, he had a great performance last night, and he was actually disappointed with it, which was, you know, a surprise to me, because it was a PB for him. So he's got a lot to look forward to. He's going to the Commonwealth Games, his first major championships, and he's really looking forward to it. He goes in four. Now, the 50 is not his favourite event. The 100 most certainly is, but he did have a very, very good heat swim this morning. His personal best is 27.51. There's only 15 one hundredths outside that this morning. Andrew Weatherit of Loughborough, also personal best set for him. This morning of 27.88. And a personal best for the man in lane two I was introduced to earlier on today, James Wilby of Loughborough University. Loughborough have two swimmers in this, in two and five, but most attention will be placed on the man in lane number five. Can Adam Peaty get a personal best here? I wouldn't bet against it. Yeah, and Adam Weatherit in lane number five has had a great start as well, but you know, don't count out Adam Peaty out. He's looking really strong. He's not going to let anyone beat him in this race. Lane five did have a very good start. He's continuing very well is Andrew Weatherit, but here comes Peaty. Peaty coming through, and Peaty's going to take this on the nod, I think. Peaty's time, 27.73 three so he's gone marshy slower than he went this morning nonetheless it's good enough to win that race andrew weather at 27 9 4 and mark campbell in third so i imagine once again maybe two nights right now adam Peaty won't be that pleased with that swim no and you can see the finish there he didn't finish very well he had a really long glide so he's got a good point three there that he could gain in that final tomorrow night but he doesn't look like he was that happy with it you can see that massive massive glide he could have probably done another stroke there to get a faster time but he can put that right for tomorrow night and that's a big improvement for him if he can do that well it was actually the glide that stopped him going to the world championship last year in the 100 breaststroke because he would have got there otherwise 27.73 andrew weather in second 27.94 that should be good enough for mark campbell's 28.04 as well i'm sure his coach mel marshall will be watching up in the crowd and telling him telling him off when he gets round to the swim down bowl <laughs> i'm sure she will 
because uh, she's very meticulous in her planning. They worked very hard on those finishes. Uh, yeah, he literally was probably about a fingernail away from making the World Championship team on the 100 last year, and it was only that glide in that stopped him doing so. Yeah, and it was really disappointing for him, but he's come back. It was a negative for him, but he's turned into a positive. He's come back really strong, and he's looking better than ever. On to the second semi-final of the 50 breaststroke. Representatives here from Loughborough, City of Manchester, Edinburgh, Stirling, East Lothian, Millfield, Putteridge Swimming Club. Well done to them for getting Lawrence Palmer through to this. And the City of Glasgow just up the road, Daniel Scott representing them. Let's give you the lineup. The 1 to 8, there's Ross Murdoch, as we can uh, see him, the fastest qualifier, and of course the new Scottish record holder in the 100 breaststroke. And there he goes in lane number four. Scottish record held by Ross at 27.28. And in the kind of form he's in this week and last week at the Scottish Nationals, I would not put money against him doing something similar. He is a man most definitely either on a mission or on form or maybe a combination of both and uh, a very amiable chatty guy who really wants to show that he is the best in the business in this event. He, he has had a great week so far. Both Ross and Mark Tully and Five have already pre-qualified for Scotland so it's great to see them here racing but they're all kind of neck and neck at the minute but Ross Murdoch does like he is going to get that final touch. Do you fancy a Scottish record? It's getting close. Oh, just outside. Oh, 27.57. Still a very impressive swim, though, by Ross Murdoch. Second place to Mark Tully and third to Ewan English. That winning time again for Ross Murdoch, 27.57. I'm not quite sure what that grimace means, no, really. He doesn't look very happy with that. I think he's a little bit disappointed. You know, I think he wanted to get that record from last week. But you can see he's looking strong. You know, there's a lot of things he can improve on to get that record tomorrow night. You know, there's his finish. It's quite a good finish, actually. Actually, he touched really well, but we can just look for that forward to that tomorrow evening. So, Josie Wellstead, Rob Holden is picking up position seven and eight. So, Rob Holden is fourth place there. 28.27 is good enough to take him through to tomorrow night's final. Ross Murdoch there, 27.57 is the class act. Well, Joe and I can have a chat whilst our uh, colleagues from Sky go off and wait to pay the rent. Um, what do we make of that? Because I, I slightly disappointed. I thought Adam would go faster. I thought Ross would go faster. So the 50 didn't quite shape up the way we hoped it might do. Yeah, we've seen them this week do great 100 breaststrokers. And, you know, I think they will be a little bit disappointed with their swims tonight. But that was the semi-final. They need to put it behind them. They've got the final tomorrow evening. I think watching them, there's definitely things that they can improve on to get that time that they're hoping for. You know, breaststroke in world swimming at the moment is tough. Breaststroke in Britain is really tough at the moment. So hopefully we can see them putting them things right for tomorrow evening. What do you make of uh, Fran Halsall's swim? I think Fran will be really, really happy with that. You know, it was a great swim for her. 100 free over the past year hasn't been where she's wanted it to be, but I know that her and James, her coach in Loughborough, have started to concentrate back on that 100. Last year, she just did the 50s, so it's great to see her doing that 100 again. You know, she's a fantastic swimmer. She's a world-class swimmer. I just think sometimes she makes a few little mistakes in that race, which can put her wrong. We saw it during the pool not have a great start. She missed one of her turns as well, so she needs to start putting those mistakes right to back up there in the world on that 100 freestyle. But it's tough. That 100 free in the world at the minute is really, really fast. They've got Kate Campbell from Australia and her sister as well. They are swimming incredibly quick. I think their best at the moment are at 52 point. That's a great swim, so Fran needs to be back at her best if she wants to get that gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. And Lauren Quigley against Lizzie Simmons. I expected Lizzie to win it, but and she was winning it for about 180 meters and then Lauren just had too much speed at the end. Yeah, I really feel for um, Lizzie Simmons. You know, I trained with her for three years in Loughborough and, you know, it's really hard to see her not achieving what she is capable of. She's a, a fantastic trainer. I've seen her train. I've trained with her and she used to beat me on freestyling training, so that's how good she is. So, you know, it's a shame that she didn't get that time and she won't be going to the Commonwealth this year, but hopefully she can bounce back from that. 
All right, still to come on here and with our colleagues on Sky Sports 2, we will have the 200 metres individual medley for women. We'll have the 100 butterfly semi-final number one and two, containing the likes of James Guy and Adam Barrett. And we'll have, before we finish, also the 100 breaststroke for women and the 50 backstroke final for men. All that to come here on the stream and on Sky Sports 2 as well. So stick around. Next up is our only Paralympic final of the night. It is the 100 meters breaststroke final, which will contain the British record holder. Harriet Lee is going in lane at number four. Say so only the four, they actually did swim against each other earlier on today. Harriet Lee hosting a 121.74. Sonny Kearney. First on the pool deck from Baldmere Swimming Club. She goes in six. A little bit off her personal best this morning. Chloe Buck of Harrogate's district. All the swimmers here representing England. Her best time, 124.71 is the time she set this morning in the heat. Always a big smile for one of the most popular Paralympic swimmers on the British team and will be on the English team, I'm sure, later on in the summer. Claire Cashmore in lane five. And we are looking at the 20, soon to be 23 year old Harriet Lee, who has the British record, which stands at 118.88. She was a little bit outside that, but I got a funny feeling she was playing possum a little bit, Joe, this morning. She knew she had a little bit in reserve. We might see that reserve tonight. There was only four swimmers in the heat this morning, and they went straight through to the final. So, you know, I don't think they gave it 100% this morning. We've seen that the nomination time for the Commonwealth Games for Team England is 121.19. So they didn't get that time this morning, but they are very, very close to it. So hopefully they can come in there tonight and you know get that qualifying time or even get that British record because that would be really exciting for us to watch. Our Paralympic swimmers who want to go to the Commonwealth Games will be competing in this very pool next week. We're celebrating and we're supporting if you can our Paralympic swimmers in Glasgow next week. That's to come. Right now they're going to take part 
in the 100 breaststroke final. Chloe Buck in lane number three. Harriet Lee, the British record holder, going in lane number four. Claire Cashmore, who must, uh, when she looks around her, feel uh, like the old woman of the uh, of the team here. She's uh, what the 26, so coming up for 26 uh, now is uh, is Claire. But uh, she's surrounded by people who are considerably younger than she is. Yeah, that's how I felt when I was swimming. I felt one of the older ones on the team. But, you know, you can see in lane four and five, Harry and Claire have both had really strong starts. And we saw that this morning in the heat. They were head-to-head -head the whole way until the last 10 metres. So they're going to push each other the whole way. But this is a great first 50 for these two girls, turning in a 38.5 and a 38.71. So if they can bring that back strong, they're looking at hopefully getting that British record. Season's best for Claire Cashmore of 122.32. She has been two seconds quicker than that, and hopefully she to pull Harriet along to a very quick time because that uh, British record 118.88 set by Harriet uh, a couple of years back is certainly under threat if these two keep going at the base they're going in. It's a head-to-head -head and a good one too between Claire Cashmore on the far side with the white cap and the red cap closest to us. The British record holder says, oh no you don't. I want to keep this British record and Claire keeps responding every time. It is. It's going to be down to the finish here but it does look like Claire Cashmore at the moment but you can't count at Harriet Lee because she had a great finish this morning. She's trying to get another good finish here but Claire thinks going to get the better of her she does 122.41 just outside the nomination time for the English team for the Commonwealth Games but on this occasion it is Claire Cashmore who just edges at Harriet Lee by 0.3 of a second third place to Chloe Buck has she improved on her time for this morning yes she has second personal best in a day for Chloe of 124.52 yeah, Claire Cashmere didn't look that happy there you can see her kind of grimacing at the end of that race and you know you can see she's not happy with that you know they looked like they were having a strong swim there you can see them fighting it out for that position and it looked really good down to the first 50 but they can see them fading slightly you know so i think they will be a little bit disappointed that they didn't get that nomination time but like you said bob they're here again next week so they have got that second chance to get that time there's claire one of the great ambassadors for Paralympic swimmers in this country. 122.41, just edging out Harriet Lee by a third of a second. New personal best, though, for Chloe Buck. Coming up shortly, we have the 200 metres individual medley final, which will have Hannah Miley, Siobhan Marie O'Connor, and Amy Wilmot. Really, really looking forward to that because that is so wide open. It's going to be a great fish. Let's hear now from Claire Cashmore, who's going to talk about her victory in the previous race, the 100 breaststroke for the SB9s. Claire, now we can see you're a little disappointed with that race. Just talk us through that swim. Um, well, I felt really good. I went out there and I, I feel like I went out a bit faster this morning. I felt so fresh, but it just wasn't there tonight. And I really wanted to get that qualifying time. I really wanted to go to Carmel as well. We normally see you in the multi-classification events and obviously today head-to-head -head against Harriet Lee. Do you enjoy these head-to-head -head battles? Yeah, definitely. It's great to have competition out there. Um, there's so many great girls in my category and the categories above and it's great for us all to race together. So yeah, it's brilliant. Congratulations, Claire. Glasgow, give it up for your S9 100m breaststroke champion. On to the women's 200 metres individual medley final. We have the English record holder and the Scottish stroke British record holder going head to head. Or say going head to head. Sophie uh, Allen is in lane two, so not quite where she would expect to be from heats into final, but she's there nonetheless. She's got a place. Uh, Hannah Miley was quickest this morning, and Hannah was not holding back sometimes in the heats. Plays a bit of cat and mouse, thinks, well, I can keep something in reserve. She was actually going very, very fast this morning. Hannah looked really good this morning. You see her on the freestyle really pull away from the other girls in the race. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to this race. We've seen Siobhan race this week already a few times and is swimming amazing. She's on fire, this girl. Hannah's having a great week as well. So this is going to be really exciting race. We've seen Amy, you know, pre-qualified for the Commonwealth Games for that 400 medley as well. So it could be anybody's race. But the time is 2.10.53. It's not easy. They're going to have to have a good time to be able to do that. That's the English record holder coming on to Paul Deck. Sophie Allen. 
It was out, but Siobhan Marie O'Connor coming on to full deck very shortly. Amy Wilmot, by the way, in lane number six. Do not discount her. Do that as your peril. Siobhan Marie O'Connor now coming on to full deck, one of the real emerging talents of the last three years. Went to the World Championships in Shanghai at the age of 15 in 2011. Three years on, she is a force to be reckoned with, but so is this young lady. Chose not to do the 400 metres individual medley here. We were looking forward to a scrap between her and Amy Wilmot. Didn't quite materialize that they're going to have a head-to-head -head in the 200 IM. I wouldn't say on normal form either of them are favorites to win this but we've had a few upsets this week we have had a few upsets and i can't count this one and who's going to win it could be anyone's there's four people in this race that could get this and it's going to be exciting to watch st felix school bath university derby giri another bath swimmer middlesbrough loughborough and leeds all represented in the final of the women's 200 meters individual medley so, can we see Sophie Allen at her best for England? University of Bath, she represents in two. Hannah Miley is the Scottish and British record holder going in lane number four. Siobhan Marie O'Connor was a little bit upset, I think, to be ousted in the 100 butterfly the other day when she thought she'd won it. So, who's going to end up on top here? And we've just seen Siobhan do a great start. I think she took the field by a bit of shock there. She came up a good few metres in front of a lot of the other girls. We've seen that she's a great fighter, so turning in 27.29. That's a very quick Quick first 50 what? for Siobhan, wow, that is very quick. I just hope she hasn't gone out too quick because the, she might struggle down this second half, but we saw her do that in the 200 free. She took it out strong and held it on. So if she can keep this going, she's looking brilliant at the moment. She just needs to keep this pace going through this race. What has she been drinking? Rocket <laughs> fuel or something? That was an amazing first 50 from Siobhan Maria God. 27.29. Uh, she's just backing off a little bit on the backstroke, but not a great deal. She's still got a sizable lead over the rest of the field, and maybe that now we can start to nail our colours to the mast of a victory for Siobhan Marie O'Connor. She leads at halfway and she has a lead of about two seconds. 59.78 that Siobhan has just turned in. Wow, that is very quick. She will know that there's some breaststrokers in this race. You've got Sophie Allen, you've got Hannah Miley, who are all really strong breaststrokers, and that'll be in the back of Siobhan, Siobhan's mind going into this breaststroke leg. We know that she's got a brilliant freestyle leg. She just needs to, you know, keep that going. Well, she is ranked three in the world at the moment. Alicia Coots of Australia has the fastest time. Femke Hemskirk in second. But uh, Siobhan has done a 2.10.35 this year. She's on course for something similar here. 1.37.84 onto the freestyle leg she goes. Amy Wilmot in second. Sophie Allen in third. Now Siobhan, can you get close to that 2.10 on the second of this uh, freestyle leg? Siobhan needs to keep it going. She's got Amy Wilmot coming up on the side as well. So she just needs to dig deep down this final 50 metres because this is going to be a brilliant swim if she can get this. Well, look at Amy Wilmot. Close her down. She's getting closer and closer with every single stroke. Siobhan is tying up in the fast few metres, but gets there. 2.09.71. Wow. It is the second fastest time in the world this year. And it's a huge new personal best as well for Siobhan Marie O'Connor. Only one swimmer has gone faster in the world this year. That's Alicia Coots. Go on, give us a smile, say, Siobhan. Where's the smile? That's a brilliant swim. She had a little smile there but look at her swim she had a fantastic first fly and look at that finish that is just a world-class swim that's brilliant to see Siobhan swimming so well in that 200 medley 209.71 and that's what was inside the fact that there's a new English record for Siobhan as well what a week Siobhan is having that's so good to see the younger girls coming up and there you can just see them both having a smile Hannah and Siobhan you know great swim for those girls and Siobhan will be so happy with that and you know you could see a coach David McNulty over the other side getting really excited as well so Sophie Allen's English record which was set in Barcelona 2013 has not lasted all that long Siobhan Marie O'Connor knocks it down with the 20971 Amy Wilmot finishing very strongly in the 21060 Sophia Allen previous English record holder in third and Hannah Miley missing out on the medals this time round for the 21199 That was quite sensational from Siobhan Marie O'Connor she is a superstar we said it when she was 15 at the World Championship I'll say it right now this girl has got so much potential they know how good she is in Bath she's not doing the breaststroke this year she's doing the IM she's doing the freestyle and when she's got her breath back and she's having a good old uh, 
good old blow at the moment. Siobhan will be telling us what she thought of that swim. Siobhan, you're absolutely on fire at the moment. An incredible performance from you there. A new English record underneath the Team England nomination time. Just try and describe to us how you're feeling. Uh, really happy. That was a hard race. Um, I'm still probably learning how to submit a bit better than that because I didn't really have a lot the last 25. But I just dug really deep. Um, yeah, I just really wanted to be able to swim that at the Commonwealth. So just really happy to go under the time. And we've seen you swim a lot of races this week. How did you come into the shape? What was your strategic plan today? Um, well, I've sort of been working on trying to put a good back end in because uh, I can sometimes get carried away in the first hundred. Uh, so I just knew there's a lot of really strong girls in there. I just wanted to try and like, put my marker down. Yeah, thanks very much, Siobhan. Everyone, give it up for our new 200 individual medley, British champion. Okay. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. And you are going to be hearing an awful lot more of her and seeing an awful lot more of her between now and Rio. And, of course, she'll go on, hopefully, to uh, Tokyo in 2020. She's young enough to have at least two more Olympics in her. Yeah, Siobhan's still very young. 2020 is definitely in her reach, but 2016 in Rio, I'm really excited to see her swim. She's got Commonwealth Games this year, and she could be coming away with a lot of medals at these Commonwealths, so she can keep that going throughout the year. But her sights will be on 2016, and, you know, I'm not tempting fate, but she could definitely be a medal hope for uh, Team GB. Well, just flashing before your very eyes was the 100 Butterflies semi-final lineup for the first of the two races. And uh, this contains some swimmers who probably have been known sometimes as freestylers, or well, certainly in James Guy's case in lane five. He's known better as a freestyler. Braxton Tim, who is the fastest qualifier in this semi-final, you see him there on the centre of your screen is the man who does freestyle and butterfly. Sometimes feels a bit more comfortable. He's working very hard with his coach, Russ Barber, early on today. Just going over a few little technical things that didn't quite work. James Guy with those um, big headphones on, blanking himself out to the world, getting himself ready for, uh, I was about to say, a fun event for him. He's known as a freestyler, but his uh, butterfly's improving too. I think it will be fun for him. It's something different. He's not used to doing 100 butterfly, but he did a great time this morning of 54-0. But this year, the 100 fly is open. We saw Michael Rock retire last year from international swimming so this could be anybody's we've got Adam Barrett in the next hit semi as well and Joe Roebuck so it's a really exciting time for 100 fly this could be anybody's race yeah it is wide open Braxton Tim in four James Guy in five Ryan Bennett but known as a backstroker, really, in lane number six, Ryan Flanagan from City of Sheffield in seven. And uh, don't overlook uh, R Michael Gunning, who's had a, a really good week for Stop 4 Metro in lane number two. So a lot of wash, a lot of splash, a lot of swimmers. And look at lane eight. Ben Lowe of Millfield is going like a train in lane eight. On the far side, you can just about see him ahead of everybody else. They're going to have to come back to him because Ben Lowe is going to touch first at 50. Yeah, that's a great first 50 for Ben Lowe, turning in a 24.68. But Braxton's Tim is also very close to him. You know, we love to see some outside smokers in this pool. You know, we've been happening a lot this week. We've seen it at the World Championships, but he needs to hold on because he is tightened to fade down this last 50. Sam Horrocks is having a good swim in lane number three. Braxton Tim is coming back to James Guy and Ryan Bennett locked together. James Guy might take this. James Guy is going to take it. We're talking about him being a freestyler. Hello, Mr. Butterfly Swimmer. Hmm. 53.32 for James Guy, a new personal best for him. Ryan Bennett in second place, third going to Sam Horrocks, and fourth to Michael Gunning. So, hello, James Guy, best known for the 200 and 400 freestyle, wants to start mixing it with the 100 Butterfly Boys now. Yeah, it's not bad for a freestyler um, going to 53.3. I think he'll be happy with that. We'll be seeing him do the 100 breaststroke, 100 backstroke maybe soon, but, you know, it is great to see him mixing up. He's finished his main events. He's done the 400 freestyle and the 200. So, you know, he's here. Why not mix it up and see what other events that he could possibly do? Well, when you're doing a personal best, he has just done 53.32. Thank you very much indeed. And progression to the final tomorrow. Ryan Bennett in second, 53.77. Sam Horrocks, 53.89. I think Braxton Tim will be disappointed, but I know he will be with a 54.19 in fifth. He'll have to wait and see if he progresses to the final tomorrow. Second semi-final of the men's 100 meters butterfly. And we have some of our Olympians in this one. Ashley James of Plymouth Leander in lane number three. Did this event 
at the Olympics in 2012. Joe Roebuck did the 400 meters individual medley in the 200 IM as well. And this is the one to eight for the second semi-final. Representatives from Wales, England, and Scotland in the mix here. Adam Barrett of Loughborough, fastest qualifier, 52.56 is his personal best, 53.71 he did this morning. Joe Roebuck now, University of Bath in lane number five, and Plymouth Leander having a very good week under the leadership of John Rudd is in lane number three. Now, Anthony James has had some uh, injury problems, Joe. Yeah, um, he's had really bad shoulder injuries this past year, so he hasn't been able to do the training that he's been used to. He hasn't been able to do as much gym, which is a shame because he was such a great swimmer. But Joe Roebuck as well had a very disappointing last year, so it'd be good to see him coming back strong. But Adam Barrett is looking really strong in lane number four. He's taken it out really, really fast at the moment. And he's a training partner to Tom Laxton, so they'll know each other how they're going to do. But he turned in a 24.7 which is quicker than the last semi-final, so this could be a great swim for him. Looks like being that, we'll keep an eye on the Wales record holder as well, Tom Laxton, 52.40. We'll be hoping to hone in on that if he can. Adam Barrett is having a good swim. Joe Roebuck is coming back strongly, but Tom Laxton really getting into his stroke now. Three of them, maybe four of them, all going to the wall together. They're bouncing off the top of the water to a great extent. But lane four, Adam Barrett's going to get this on the touch. No, he's not. Tom, Tom, Tom Laxton gets there. Whoa, that was tight. Must have been right on the nod. 52.95 for lane six, Thomas Laxton. Adam Barrett, 53.08. Must have thought he had got that. I certainly did. But Adam Barrett is edged down into second place by 13 one hundredths of a second. Joe Roebuck in third. And Anthony James doesn't get on the podium this time in fourth, 53.45. Obviously, that's the semi final. They'll be back tomorrow night. But Anthony James will have to sit and wait if he makes the top eight. That was a really good swim for Thomas Laxton. That was all down in the finish. I don't think any of us knew who was going to get that touch, and it was all down, but it was so, so close. So that's going to be a really exciting final tomorrow night. It's going to be very, very close. But 52.95, that's the fastest going into the final tomorrow night. So that's going to be something to really look forward to. Thomas Laxton, the Wales record holder, doesn't improve on that, but does get the best time in that race. 52.95, Adam Barrett, 53.08, and Joe Roebuck in third, 53.29. And Anthony James comfortably making the final tomorrow night. One hundred breaststroke for women. We saw a really enthralling, exciting two hundred breaststroke on Saturday here. And we saw Molly Renshaw beaten by Sophie Taylor. Sophie Taylor setting a new English record. Sophie Taylor is already the English record holder in the hundred. Now, with the speed that she showed in the 200, there's Molly Renshaw, who was at second. She goes in lane number five in the opening semi-final. Georgina Evans was just marginally quicker than she was in the heats this morning. Looking for that breakthrough year for Molly. And she goes in lane number five. There's no best of uh, 69.44. The uh, nomination time is a really, really tough one for the England Commonwealth Games team. 107. 36, 86 is the time that uh, they need to achieve to uh, definitely get on the England Commonwealth Games team. But this is the semi-final, so probably not going to go for broke, not going to go flat out here. Daniel Lowe's had a decent start in lane number six. Uh, hardly anything to choose between all eight swimmers across the pool, but just probably edging in front as they come towards the conclusion of the first 50. Daniel Lowe of City of Derby. And Georgia Evans as well down this first 50 has been looking really strong, turning in a 32.59. And it is a really tough time at 107.36 to get, but Sophie Taylor in the next semi final has done that. And we were saying the other day that the breaststroke hadn't really moved on in Great Britain, and it definitely did the other day in the 200 breaststroke and we need to see that in the 100 as well but Georgia Evans is looking really strong at the moment with 25 meters to go yeah the red cap looking very prominent trying to come back onto her shoulders Molly Renshaw but not making much inroads yet maybe she will over the last 15 it's the city of Liverpool so and Georgina Evans holding off the advances of Molly Renshaw for the time being but Molly Renshaw is coming alongside her and Molly Renshaw might get this on the touch very close Molly Renshaw does get it just by 
21 hundredths of a second, 109.22. All the momentum seemed to be with Molly coming into the wall. She managed to claim that one. Georgina Evans in second place. Third, Danielle Lowe in 110.47. So a good marker laid down there by Molly Renshaw and a new personal best for her. Yeah, I thought Georgina Evans had got that. You know, she was looking really strong, but Molly had a great finish. You can see her coming over on the shoulder of Georgina Evans and she just got to that wall first. And that's a good time for her, 109.2. I think she'll be really pleased with that. You can see a little smile on her face when she finished. Like, yeah, the job's done. She can go through to the final tomorrow night. But I think it's the next semi-final that we've all been looking forward to. Molly has moved across to Loughborough now and uh, shown an improvement there by almost quarter of a second. 109 to 2. Georgina Evans in second. Danielle Lowe in third. And Katie Armitage with a 110.71. Yeah, here comes the semi-final, as Joe referred to, that we really are looking forward to. Not that we wanted to dismiss the first one, because that was quite entertaining and very, very close, but the main movers and shakers, we think, are probably going to be contained within this semi-final. We have the English stroke British record holder, Sophie Taylor, going in lane number four. Sophie Allen is in there, too, in lane number three. And uh, Corey Scott had a very good swim indeed this morning. So three, four, and five will be very competitive, but we would expect on paper, certainly with what she showed last night and has shown over the past few months, for the swimmer in lane number four there, Sophie Taylor, to emerge from shore. She was very upbeat when I spoke to her earlier today. She thinks she could do something special over the next couple of days. Probably going to save it tomorrow night, but tonight she still wants to get a very quick time. We saw Sophie in the 200 breaststroke go out in a 69 point, which is what she did this morning. So you could see that it was nice and smooth this morning and you know she's one to watch for the future she's a fantastic talent and i'm really looking to see forward to seeing what she can do in that 100 breaststroke one of the quickest away not as quick as sophie allen got off the blocks quite quickly for bath university and has just got a little early advantage over sophie taylor but it's very very marginal because the yellow cap now is starting to protrude through that water much more quickly than everybody else also going fantastically quickly over the first 50 is sarah vasey on the far side this keeps happening to us that the faster starters often come in lane seven and eight and sarah vasey is going to be there or thereabouts at the turn just behind corey scott and sophie taylor it's safe Sophie Taylor didn't have a great start there. You know, on that 100 breaststroke, you need to get out really strong. But, you know, Corey's got turning a 32-1. That's a good first 50 for her. But Sophie Taylor just now needs to get up onto her shoulder and get to that finish first. Sophie Taylor has the British record of 107.34 set in Dubai in August 2013. But she and Corey Scott are having a good old scrap here. She's not having it all her own way as we thought perhaps she would do, Sophie Taylor. She's still going to win it. She's going to win by half a body length now. The question is, what kind of time? 108.17. That has taken it much, much further than we saw in the previous semi final. Second time for Corey Scott of 108.89. And in third place, Rachel Wilson in 110.23. We want to see the 68s, we want to see the 67s and the 66s, of course, but not going to be happening today. Yeah, I think Sophie Taylor's definitely got a 66 in her, you know, but that 200 breaststroke that she did the other night would have taken it out of her. So, you know, she needs to rest now for that final tomorrow evening. Here comes the uh, finish between the two of them, and, uh, well, Sophie got herself pretty much in advance of that stage. So that's the finish for Sophie Taylor. Decent time. I know she'll go faster tomorrow, but I'm sure she will. 108-17. Corey Scott in second. Rachel Wilson in third. And Beth Aitchison in 110-87 in semi-final number two of the 100 breaststroke. I think there's only one place we can start, Joe, is with Siobhan Marie O'Connor. What a swim. I mean, what a swimmer she is. You must be really, I'm very excited about her. What do you think in terms of the possibilities for her over the next few years? Siobhan is just, you watch her swim, and she's just an incredible athlete. Speaking to her coach, David, and he's really excited, and it takes a lot to get David excited. He used to be my coach, so I know that, but she is one to watch. She just looked phenomenal. She took it out from the start. You know, I was a bit worried that she might fade off a little bit, but she didn't. She kept going, and she's still young. She can do that. She can back up 
swims but you know she has definitely got medal potential in 2016 and she is definitely one that the world are going to be watching as well you know she's not just one of the best swimmers in Great Britain she's one of the best swimmers in the world and you know we haven't seen that on the 200 medley very often for Great Britain so you know she is just one to watch and I'm really excited about her and you know I think she's definitely going to be bringing a lot of medals home for Great Britain and England at the Commonwealth Games. Just looking by the way at the medal ceremony for the Paralympic swimming race we saw earlier, the 100 metres breaststroke final for the SP9. So we see Claire Cashmore get her gold medal. Just carrying on the Siobhan Marie O'Connor discussion, my only concern is she's starting to become a bit like an English version of Hannah Miley. She fancies a crack at pretty much everything. She was doing breaststroke last year, she's not doing it this year. She's obviously an IM swimmer, she's a freestyle swimmer. Would it not be better for her just to concentrate on one discipline and put all her eggs in that basket? Is she good enough? Could she potentially be good enough to spread herself as thinly as that? I think if you want to experiment, this is the year to do it. It's the Commonwealth Games, it's not the World Championships or the Olympics. She's still got two years out of the Olympic Games, so she's experimenting to see what her best event is. We didn't think she'd go that time in the 200 freestyle, and she hasn't been training for the 200 freestyle, so, you know, she is really exciting, but she does need to be careful. She doesn't want to be doing every single event in the programme, and that making her a lot more tired and struggling, but you know, she's, she's one to watch. It is exciting, and, you know, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how she does that 200 medley that she did tonight is world class so is the 200 freestyle we've seen Maria Belmonte do a lot of different events so maybe Siobhan's the new Maria Belmonte that would be brilliant it would be great wouldn't it 50 backstroke final for men coming up shortly the 50 butterfly for women and we'll get on to a couple of the junior finals watch it live on Sky Sports 2 in HD <laughs> metres backstroke final coming up next now under normal circumstances but the last couple of years have not been normal for Liam Tancock he would be the red hot favorite he is the English and British record holder at 2404 time set in Rome in 2009 you expect Liam to win this fairly comfortably but he had a, a troubled year an injury plagued year in 2013 so probably Chris Walker heaven might just take the nod on this one Joe Liam's had a really tough year you know speaking to Liam speaking to James's coach he hasn't done a proper training 
training session, you know, for this whole year. He's really struggled with a shoulder injury, which is hard to see. You know, he won medals at the World Championships. He's European champion, Commonwealth champion over the 50 backstroke. And unfortunately, he won't be going to the Commonwealth Games this year, so it's really hard to see that. But, you know, he's such a kind of sprightly person. Liam's always got a smile on his face and he's always happy. And, you know, he loves swimming and it's great to see him in here. And, you know, I know that he's going to go into this 50 backstroke feeling really positive, wanting to produce a brilliant swim. He'll be in lane number five. Chris Walker Heaven of oh, Bath will be in lane number four. Marco Locker, the Wales record holder at 25.03, will be in lane number six. Also in the mix, Jack Ness, just up the road at the Coast Club in Scotland, and Rory Lamont of West Dumbartonshire, also from Scotland. There is Liam, nice new headphones, nice new goggles. In his own world, I think, in lane number five. <laughs> Marco Locker in there, taking his place in six. There's Jack Ness in seven, and Rory Lambert. But uh, this is the man with the fastest time this morning, Chris Walker Heaven. Personal best it was indeed, of uh, 25.20. I think, and I'm sure he thinks he can go quicker. Liam Tancock is certainly nowhere near a 24.04. He may win it, but he's not going to get close to that time the way things are. He only got back in the fall early part of January, so he hasn't had the lead-up to this event he would have wanted. Yeah, I don't think we'll be anywhere near Liam's British record of 24.0, but, you know, Chris hasn't been doing the 50 backstroke for very long. He used to be a 200 backstroker. He then started to concentrate on the 100 down to the 50, so I think he's still got a lot of improvement to do in this 50. Let's find out. We will know in about 25 seconds or thereabouts whether it's Chris Walker Hebben, Liam Tancock, or possibly Marco Lochran. Marco 25.03, the Welsh record season's best of 25.7, 25.9 in the heats this morning. Let's see whether he can improve upon that. Liam Tancock always has a very, very good start. He's had a great start here as ever and has got the lead at 25. Liam is so powerful underwater and on top of the water and he's looking really great down this and he just needs to keep it going. And if he can keep this going, this is going to be a really good swim for Liam. It's a very, very good swim for Liam Tancock. Who's going to win this? This is the Liam Tancock of all, maybe not time-wise, but good, good, good. 25.09, that's more like it. Liam Tancock having to take second place to Chris Walker Heaven on that touch. Wow. Chris Walker Heaven stealing it on the touch. Didn't look that way visibly to me, I have to say. No, watching that, I'm, I honestly 100% thought that Liam Tancock got that, and that's really shocked me. I expected Liam's name to come over, but, you know, Chris Walker Heaven must have had a phenomenal finish there that we didn't catch, but, you know, 25 0 is a, a good time for Chris and I think he'll be happy with that. Boys, we have to throw throw down to you and show this uh, finish on the replay. This is the start for Liam in lane number five. Now, look at this finish. Does Liam not get there first? Well, Liam was, uh, I want to say, a, a, lot, a lot in front of uh, Chris there. It was, it's just, it's kind of baffled me a little bit because he was, you really thought that he was going to get that. He was ahead the whole way. Hmm. He was ahead with, you know, two metres to go. So, you know, but that's swimming. That's what happens in swimming. It's always down to the finish. What, did, what did they used to say in soap, confused you will be. I must admit, with my, my naked eyes, uh, so I see anything you'll get naked this afternoon. Uh, Chris Walker Heaven didn't take that race, but there you go. Obviously on the touch, hit the, the uh, touch pad at the right time, and he's going to tell us all about his victory in 25.09. Here is Chris Walker Heaven. Chris, a fast and furious 50 from you there. You said earlier on in the week you were a little bit disappointed with the 100. Does that performance make up for it today? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always fun doing a, a 50, and I'm happy with a 25.0. Obviously, the, uh, the elusive 24 is there, but that'll come with time. And obviously, you raced against a world-class field there. Liam Tancock was next to you in the next lane, world record holder. Tell us what it's like racing against him. Um, I love racing Liam. Uh, He's just, he's great in the call room, he's always smiling. It's also uh, quite daunting racing the world record holder, but just got to keep your head and uh, get on with it. Thanks very much, Chris. Everyone put your hands together for our 50 metre backstroke British champion. OK, that's what Chris had to say. Now, let's look at the finish here, Joe. See if we can sort this out, because I have to say, it looked to me like Liam had that. Yeah, and it still looks like Liam's got that to me. I'm, I'm baffled. Unless Liam didn't touch the wall properly, maybe he didn't touch it hard enough, but maybe 
maybe we know something that they don't down there, but it has really, really baffled us up here. And, you know, to me, looking at that, I still think Liam's got it. Whether there was something wrong with the touch pad, whether he didn't hit it hard enough, we'll never know. But it, I, I'm still a bit confused, if I'm being honest. Well, as I say, I called it as I saw it, and then I saw the scoreboard, and it said Chris Walker happened first and Liam Tancock second. So that's what the scoreboard says. That's what we have to accept. But uh, certainly, uh, from the angles we've looked at, it uh, looked like Liam. But anyway, they'll come another day. He'll have plenty of those, don't worry. Fran Housel out for the 50 metres butterfly final. This is going to be, well, I was about to say a cracker. It could be a cracker because we're hoping that Fran's going to post a very, very fast time. Her English and British record is 25.69. She set that in Barcelona when she won the bronze medal last year at the World Championships. Yeah, she was only 0.2 off it last night, and she looked really strong on the 50 fly. You know, she's really been working on her speed and her start on the 50s. She's been working a lot with her coach at Loughborough, and we've seen her do some world-class starts here. So if she can get that start and finish right, we could be looking at a new British record here. Sean Harkin has the Scottish record, 26.75, and she goes in lane number six. <whistles> Amy Smith, the training partner of Fran Housel, which I think we've already mentioned, is back alongside her in the pool. Rachel Kelly, do not discount her. She won the 100 butterfly final the other day. Probably hasn't quite got the speed, though she did do a personal best this morning to get into lane five. Should be. <laughs> He says in inverted commas, the Fran House Hall show here in lane number four. Who can go with her? Amy Smith in three, Rachel Kelly in five. We're found out in the next ten seconds or so. Great first 25 for Fran. She's kept her head down. She had a great start, and she's looking really, really strong. You know, she's going to win this race easily. It's all about the time for Fran. British record, English record. Can she get close? Can she get close? She is close, but not close enough, maybe. 25.83, 14 one hundredths outside the British record for Fran Housel, the time she set in Barcelona last year. Second place for Amy Smith in 26.41. And that is a new personal best and a big one too for Amy in second place. And Rachel Kelly, 26.57. So she's improved upon the time that she set in the heat this morning. But there's the Fran smile. She's happy enough with that, even if it's not quite as quick as maybe she would have liked. I thought if Fran was going to go a little bit quicker. that. We can see here she had a great start. She came up ahead of the rest of the field. And if you can watch her finish, she didn't have the best finish of the race. She did an extra stroke and finished really short. So if she could maybe finish that stroke a little bit better, she could have got that British record. But she's just taken the British title. She's a gold medalist. So great swim for Fran. 25.83, so good, good time. And it's uh, one of the best times in the world this year. Amy Smith, 26.41. And Rachel Kelly, 26.57 in third place. Fran, fantastic racing. That's back-to-back -back wins for you so far in the 53 and now the 50 butterfly. How does that performance compare to last night's win? That one was really good. I felt really strong in that, apart from I pretty much finished with my nose. <laughs> you were just edge out of the medals in this event in Barcelona, but you are current Commonwealth champion from Delhi 2010. So can we expect to see you back on top of the podium this summer? Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thanks, Fran. Everyone, give it up for your new 50 butterfly champion. the stream with the junior men's 50 meters back to find just to clarify for you uh, I did say it was one of the fastest times in the world is actually the fourth fastest time in the world for Fran Housel in that, that 50 butterfly uh, she did have a 25.88 so she's improved on that by five one hundredths of a second this year yeah and we've just heard Fran say that she finished on a nose there so she's a little bit disappointed with how she did so she's definitely got room for improvement in that 50 fly I think she's definitely capable of going 25 mid even 25 low she is a spectacular sprinter and she's one of the best sprinters in the world and I'm really looking forward to seeing her at the Commonwealth Games trying to defend her title. 
Still got some uh, junior finals for you, two more of them. They are smash and dash versions. Uh, the 50 meters backstroke final will contain three swimmers, and then we'll have a full contingent for the women's 50 meters butterfly. Before we wrap tonight, uh, from our point of view, as we watch uh, Chris Walker Heaven receiving his gold medal, and Liam Tancock saying, I I've got to admit, I'm going to have to go back and watch that race again because I, I feel a complete fool thinking that Liam had won it. I keep thinking, were we actually watching the right lane here? Maybe we've just totally miswatched the race or watch the wrong swimmer but you know looking back on it and it is still baffling me that I honestly thought Liam had got that Chris was nowhere Liam through the whole of that race and you know maybe Liam didn't have a great finish maybe he missed the wall and moved again into it I just I can't quite understand it but I'm sure James's coach will be looking at that race looking to see what went wrong and maybe even talking to the referees and seeing what they thought of that race yeah it certainly needs a bit of investigation to me because you know you don't normally especially well, when it's 100 of seconds it's that tight you can't call it but you look at the gap between them it was over a tenth of a second and it wasn't that kind of race at all was it yeah i think there was point two between them and you know us watching we're on the finish line so we can see how they're finishing we can see how they do and you know chris was nowhere near liam so you know maybe something went wrong maybe liam does know that he did win it i don't know but sh i'm sure liam will say something <laughs> i'm sure he will in due course <laughs> anyway uh, just remind you that uh, we're back in the morning we have two junior finals still again we are back on the morning uh, just before nine o'clock with all the heats on day number five and uh, sadly i'll have to let joe go back to that nasty alan march across the way who does the uh, in pool announcing and uh, the uh, uh, hop along Cassidy, Ross Davenport will be back in your place. Are you going to miss me, Bob? I'm going to miss you I a lot, so. Joe. I'm yeah. going to miss you too, yeah. I'll be going back over to Alan March over the other side of the pool. I feel like I'm on the dark side at the minute. I'm, I'm yeah, cross sides, but I like this view from where I am tonight. It's a good view of the pool. And an amazing pool it is as well. I'm really looking forward to like seeing everyone race at the Commonwealth Games. And, you know, it's it's such a bright and airy pool. And I kind of wish I was in there swimming with everyone. Well, who's stopping you? There's probably still time. They haven't, they haven't got the junior boys out yet, so if you fancy the Chance. Now would be your moment to go and do that. But uh, we do have two finals to come. Junior men's 50 metres backstroke final. And there's another medal ceremony to come before we get to that. And look at that smile. Three look at that smile. For girls. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Pretty in purple. Amy Smith on the left hand side. All smiling away and laughing. So it's nice to see that with swimming. You know, everyone gets on, even though they're racing each other and trying to get that first place, you can see all the girls having a laugh with each other. And, you know, it's really refreshing to see that that's what British women is about. They're supporting each other and they want each other to do well. Two personal bests in a day, too, for Rachel Kelly. I don't think Fran was smiling when she beat her in the 100 butterfly the other day. No, she was definitely the shock for that 100 fly. I don't think anyone expected Rachel Kelly to get that goal. You know, with 10 metres to go we all thought it was about Fran and Siobhan and I think we were all looking at Fran and Siobhan and then when uh, Rachel touched that wall we were a bit taken back a bit shot by it but she's having a great meet she's having a great week she trains with James Gibson in Loughborough all these three girls train with James Gibson so their sprint squad's coming on really nicely in Loughborough and they're doing really well there yeah one two three for their program and another gold medal. I don't quite know where she puts them all now. She must have a huge collection, Fran Housel. And here's another one to put around her neck. Another one to put in the sock drawer. I don't probably, know where she keeps them. Probably a shoe box. She's got a lot of shoes, so she probably <laughs> keeps them all in her shoe boxes. Where she put her shoes then? Uh, she wears them. <laughs> all she has all, a lot all of shoes. At the same time. <laughs> That'd be a bit uncomfortable, wouldn't it? Yeah, Fran likes shopping. That's one thing that Fran likes to do: spending money on shoes and clothes. Is that, is that a female swimmer's prerogative? I think so, because Becky used to like doing that as well. Becky he liked her shoes and you know I think because we spent our whole time in the water with tracksuits on wet hair on a weekend when we get weekends off it was always nice to go out and treat ourselves to something nice to wear and feel girly because you don't feel girly very often when you're swimming with no, <laughs> no makeup on in your hair. exactly so it is great that you know having a weekend chill out going out shopping and yeah they, Fran is a very girly girl so she'll be doing that on a, a lot of her weekends off up shortly, in fact, almost immediately, is the uh, junior 50 backstroke final. Sadly, we've only got three in this, but nonetheless, it hopefully will be a very competitive event because we have Adam Taylor of the City of Sunderland going in lane number three, and then couldn't be Ogden Fibo of Beckenham in lane number four, and Oliver Smith of Cockermouth in five. In terms of their personal best times, 26 mid for Kunmi. 27.02 for Oliver and 27.23 for Adam Taylor. So it's not a great deal between them, to be absolutely honest. It's to be fairly tight. 
Uh, in terms of the times this morning, 26.8 for Kunmi, 27.02 for Oliver Smith. So that was his personal best from the Heat. And 27.46 from Adam Taylor. So this could be a pretty competitive event. I do like the trainers, by the way. Even the young swimmers who haven't made any money out of the sport and maybe never ever will always have rather nasty trainers. Yeah, they were matching his hat as well, so he colour coordinated for this race. <laughs> Yeah, and well, why not? See, the boys can be fashionable too. Yeah, don't tell them that. Don't tell Ross that to Murray. Uh, he'll be getting a big head when he comes back when you say he's uh, fashionable and colour coordinated. Yeah, no, I'm not sure he is, to be honest. In fact, quite the reverse. But uh, if we can get him up the stairs, I'll be happy enough, because that, that's, that's going to take a bit of work. Right, in terms of ages, Adam Taylor was born in 96 in June. Another June baby was Ogden Fibo in 97. And uh, the baby of the pack is Oliver Smith. And actually, Ogden Fembo is the uh, baby of the pack, Oliver Smith, 96 born. So, one length of the toll cross ball on their backs, looking for personal best, all three of them. And it's going to be, I think, a very, very good scrap between uh, Ogden Fibo in four, Smith in five, and Taylor in three. Yeah, Kunmi in lane four had a great start there. He's personal best is 0.5 quicker than the rest of the guys in this group and you know he's pulling away here and looking really strong down this last five meters 26.58 is his previous best time 26.37 is now his best time for Kunmi Ogun Fibo second place going to Adam Taylor 26.92 that's the second personal best in a day for Adam and third is Oliver Smith in a 27.10 and that too is a personal best of all three improving on their previous best time Times. Yeah, they all improved from their uh, their heat swim this morning, which is great to see, and getting personal best as well. So they've moved that on. It's hard for them to get in there. There's three of them racing. It's not like a, a final where there's eight of them all fighting it out for that top place. There's three swimmers. So for them to get personal best, you know, they'll be really pleased with that, and that's a great stepping stone for them. Well done, Kumi. Well done to Adam and to Oliver. Go away from Glasgow, knowing they've done a very good job, the best job they have ever done in the pool, and uh, seeing a bit of progression in the 50 back, which is good. Final event of the day is the women's 50 metres butterfly and for the juniors. And we're looking at um, Holly Hibbert, who's born in 99, and Freya Rayner, born in 98. And oh dear, I'm feeling old again. <laughs> I am too, don't worry. <laughs> Constance Dean is back again as well. She was uh, featuring earlier on. She'll be going in lane at number eight. Going in reverse order here. Catherine Stark Warrender in seven. Amelia Kleins of City of Leeds in six. Georgina Pryor of Honderston in five. Imogen Clark of Deventio in four. Chloe Barrow of Kelly College in three. Freya Rayner of City of Sunderland in two. And Holly Hibbert of Southport in lane number one. Fastest time in the field in terms of personal bests is out of Imogen Clark at 28.02. But I tell you that all eight swimmers have personal bests in the 28 range. This might be a blanket finish. Yeah, this is going to be really exciting to watch. And, you know, this age group of swimmers, they'll have European juniors this year, which is their stepping stone. You know, they're probably a little bit young for the Commonwealth Games. So the European juniors, they will hopefully go to. So they need to set great times here to be able to progress to those uh, Europeans. Already in for bed. I think uh, once the music has stopped, we can get the girls aboard for the one to eight for the 50 butterfly for the juniors. So these are the uh, 14, 15 year olds with hopefully a great swimming future in front of them. Last to settle is Freya Rayner of the City of Sunderland. Reaction times all pretty much of a much. This is, I think, their times will be when they come to the end, because at 25, it's a blanket of wash, a blanket of swimmers, and nobody really making a move yet, although Georgina Pryor's having a good swim in lane five. Yeah, Georgina had a great first 25 there. It's going to be very, very close. We've also got Amelia next to her as well, and it is going to be all down to the finish, but I think it's Georgina that will take that, and she does. And yeah. 27 I thought after what happened earlier, I'd wait and <laughs> yeah. see on the clock. Georgina Pryor, 27.84, with the media clients in second. And third is Freya Rayner. So that winning time, 27.84 for Georgina Pryor, takes her into the 27 club along with the media clients. It's an area where they have never been before, and they're very happy to inhabit now. Two personal bests there for Georgina and Amelia. So that's great. 
27 point is really good for these teams. It's the first time under 28, so they'll be really pleased with that, how they've done. Georgina Fryer, 27-8-4. Mina Klein, 27-9-5. Freya Reyna, 28-10. And as we haven't got captions, I'll give you the rest. Imogen Clark, 28-12. Chloe Barrow, 28-16. Holly Hibbert, 28.29. A 28-6 from Catherine Stark. And Constance Dean, 28.68. Before we go, quick wrap-up on the night. Your outstanding swim would be... I think it's going to have to be Siobhan again. I've already picked Siobhan for a 200 freestyle this week, but, you know, she took that 200 medley out on her own. She is on fire, and she I think she's my swimmer of the week so far. She is swimming amazing, and it's great to see her coming through. She went to the Olympic Games, she's been to the World Championships, but she is the one that is coming through this year. Well... <laughs> I haven't got any more events here, so this is fun. <laughs> OK. Me we have, We've got one more. It's a swim-off, that's why. Thank you very much indeed. I'm thinking that's... Nobody told us about that. <laughs> 50 metres press stroke swim-off. For reserve. OK, right, thank you, everybody downstairs for that information. We're thinking we're done and dusted here. And then <laughs> out come two boys thinking, no, you're finished now, bud. So Sorry, we're closing the ball. <laughs> Richard Spohr going in lane number four and Christopher Seaballs in Manchester in lane number five. So a little bit more uh, entertainment before we depart in the men's 50 metres breaststroke. Spohr in four, Christopher Steeples in lane number five. So closest to us is Spohr and furthest away in five is Christopher Steeples. It's been an eventful afternoon, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and these are swimming off for the reserve place. They're not actually swimming off for the final, but, you know, it, it, we could actually see these than they did earlier on this evening because they're fighting out for that place. Well, they almost certainly will because that's what happens when you have a swim off. Everybody goes past and you always think, well, you could have done it the first time around and saved yourself an awful lot of trouble. But Richard Spore closest to us. It's, wow. it's going to be all oh, on the Oh, don't give us another one. Don't give us another one, please. No, five gets there. Oh. 28.39, yeah, Christmas lane steeples five. by two tenths of a second, 28.59 for Richard Spore. So I thought we were going to have another swim off I thought so too. <laughs> this could go on all night. Have another go. Have another go. It's still at 2 o'clock in the morning watching a swim off, for heaven's sake. They'd be doing heads and tails then, I think. <laughs> so well done to Christmas steeples, 28.39. We were just in the middle of a wrap because we thought we were going to finish, but we can now finish properly. All right, outside of Shimon Rio, Carlo, which I think we, we both of us, in fact, think was the best swimmer of the night. Who else impressed you along the way? There's been so many amazing swimmers this week. I think the junior swimmers are really starting to shine, which is great to see. Adam PT in the 50 breaststroke, Chris Walk Heaven in the 50 backstroke, even though we weren't quite sure on that one. But it's it's so refreshing to see the younger swimmers come through, and it does make it exciting for British swimming. So, yeah, definitely Siobhan was up there for me. And the 200 backstroke, a little bit disappointed with Lizzie, but I really hope that she can come back fighting strong. Thank you, Joe. Back over the way you go. Ross back with you in the morning. Let's go down to Hannah. Well, what an incredible evening that's been. <laughs> Literally on the edge of my seat the whole night. Kerry ann firstly, I'm going to say the highlight for me had to be Siobhan Marie O'Connor. That first 50 metres was absolutely rapid. Last 15 metres, I was a little bit scared. I mean, obviously she was <laughs> going to win it, but, you know, she kind of tired down a little bit. Yeah, you? I think what Siobhan sometimes does is that she gets a little bit carried away. She said it herself in her interview that sometimes she just gets a bit carried away in the first bit and if you go too hard on that medley, then by towards the end of it, you know, you've built up all that lactic acid and then the last 15 metres everybody's going to be chasing you down. If you're in front, you're going to be, be reeled in. So if she can make sure that that last 15 metres is absolutely the best that she can do, um, you know, she'll be looking to, to win a medal in that tournament medley at the Commonwealth. Absolutely. And highlight for you tonight? Highlight for me was uh, to see Claire Cashmore actually in the in the 100 breaststroke. She seemed really emotional in her interview after the race and she was so close to the nomination time and you could just see how much people yeah. put into this kind of thing. It's, but it's, it's not, everything. It's not that she hasn't, she's got another opportunity. She does, she? yeah. Thankfully she does have another opportunity to do it next week. She's been here, she's swam in this pool. Hopefully next week she can be a little more relaxed and do the time. And I'm sure that that will have given her the, uh, the absolute fight there to, to make sure she gets that time next week. Yeah, absolutely. She was really close to it so hopefully just a little improvements here
here and there. She's got it. And strong swims from the juniors tonight as well. Yeah, what's really great is these juniors are seeing people like Francesca Holsall, seeing people like James Guy breaking the British record at the beginning of the week, who is kind of a junior in himself, seeing yeah. this is what he can do, you know, a year ago, maybe I can be doing that next year with them. Hopefully, well, absolutely hopefully, because <laughs> it's made great watching of the, uh, of the swimming tonight. Now, heat session tomorrow, we're back again at 5 to 9 in the morning for the heat, so carry on on the stream that is for the heats and Sky Spots 2 tomorrow evening from 6 o'clock, but at 5 to 9 in the morning, morning carry on what are we going to be looking for so I think tomorrow it's kind of day five of the meet so people will start to be getting a little tired so tomorrow is going to be about the people being on top of their game making sure that they're really going for it we have the men's 200 bus fly tomorrow so that will be a really um, tough swim because yeah. a lot of them have done the semi-final tonight of that 100 fly so they'll probably be doing the double which will be quite interesting to see I think yep okay and have you enjoyed this evening carry on I have it's been really good I think um you know a few swims that were just off the marker, I think. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Elizabeth Simmons in that 200 backstroke, she'll be really disappointed with not winning it and not going a bit quicker. She's been quicker than that this yeah. year, so she'll be looking to do that. Yep, she will indeed. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us here on the live stream. As I said earlier, don't forget, tomorrow morning at 5 to 9, we'll be back with more heats ready for the finals tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. We'll see you in the morning.